Uh, I suspect we make the switch. You should be able to see us now in this small screen. Yes, I yes I am. Yeah. I can see. <laughs> um, we we have a very important legal matter to discuss, a proposal to discuss. But I I know that you're quite familiar with everything that's happening on the ground. So let's start off with your initial reactions. It's happened again and again. Youngsters, particularly young girls, being assaulted, raped, abused by people in society and whoever. How do you begin to react to this latest um, report in St. Lucia that a police officer has been charged with sexual assault on an 11-year-old? Well, of course, we always have to be vigilant with persons within authority because abuse and authority is always a concern for citizens. And so when persons within their, the authority or pose authority, it's very um, alarming that such matters have continued to exist because it's not like this is the first incident. And let's just um, keep reminding ourselves of that. And it's, of course, that um, I think of a new police commissioner is taking a very strong call and making a strong position on those kinds of offenses. We've also had allegations of sexual harassment within the police force. So there's quite a number of concerns that is emulating from the police force that has reached the public domain. And it's very important that our police commissioner enlighten us. And of course, where crime occurs, as I said before, it doesn't matter in what profession that you are, what um, authority that you have, if you break the law, sanctions and penalties should also be subjected to you. Yeah. Um, justice here is, is, should be the main priority. Um, aligned with justice is the, the care and protection of the victim as well, correct? But of course, because as a society, as a democratic society, a society with a moral responsibility for its individuals, it is important that we punish the perpetrators and we do not punish the innocent. Mm -hmm. And that is very important. So our judicial system is primarily designed in a way that we do not punish the innocent. Although that we may see the person committing the act, there's a process. And within that process, it is our responsibility as citizens to ensure that the process is done without any kinds of biases, without any form of corruption, and so that it is done in a way that the perpetrators are convicted and that justice is done swiftly. Mm -hmm. And so the emphasis, again, for us as a society is primarily to ensure that the innocent or the victims receive the justice that is required from us as a society. So we as a society have our role to play, um, very much like the judicial system have, have their role to play. So whether it's the judges, whether it's the attorneys, whether it's the, the police officers, whether it's the prison officers, they themselves have their duty. And we as citizens have our duty to ensure that things are done the way that it ought to be. There's an element of accountability. There's an element of transparency. And of course, there's an element of integrity, which is, I think, most of the questions that we'll be discussing today, the element of integrity, because we've seen persons, as you highlighted, persons within various posi um, positions are taking advantage of individuals, are taking advantage of citizens, mm -hmm. law-abiding citizens, in some cases minors. And so we must, as a society, ensure that those persons are held accountable for whatever actions or whatever harms that they have created on every and every citizen within yeah. society it continues to be a big concern um, quickly before we wrap up here on this part of the interview that these issues continue to be swept under the carpet and and there are special arrangements to pay off um the family of the perpetrators how concerning is that for you that it continues even now in 2022 well, it, of course, because we as a society, we have been a little lenient because some of the persons who commit those offenses are people we know. And so as a result, we not we not want to be met. We will not want to met harsh punishments mm. towards those individuals because some of those individuals, as I said, they're part of society. And I'm quite sure everyone you know, may have known, some persons may have known the persons that commit those offenses, particularly when we see offenses being done by um, juveniles, 
we're seeing the gun violence. The majority of all persons, the young persons that died because they are meeting that violence towards each other. So there are two facets to it. Um, that who the perpetrator is and how our society reflects on those individuals and the nature of the crime. Yes. So once we see very heinous crimes, the public responds, there's a public outcry. There are persons, particularly with this um, very recent incident with the minor, the rape of the minor, where the alleged rape of the minor, we're seeing the public is calling for justice to be done. We do not care who this individual is. And it's worse off that this individual is part of the alleged individual, is part of the law. This individual has been charged. So the reality is that we as society, we tend to focus, of course, on the perpetrator, who the perpetrators are, and of course, the nature of the crime. Did the person do it? Or was that offense done mm. intentionally? Was the person, did it well? Was it done out of malice? So all of that we take into consideration. So it seems also that our own moral um, positions on various situations. So when we think about rape, when we think about gun violence, when we think in terms of white collar crimes, how do we think about white collar crimes? Mm -hmm. Most persons may not see it as something detrimental to the society. So people may not have a public outcry to it. Um, well, unless if it's around political um, spaces, mm -hmm. but however, if it's cases of violent crimes towards women, violent crimes towards children, and even us towards men as well, because what we're seeing, the public, there's a public outcry towards the level of gun violence towards men. And that has changed. And I want society, most of us, to recognize that. There was a period of time persons were, I'm not saying that we were not interested in what men were doing or what young men, what young males were doing, but now it's gotten to the level that it is a concern of every citizen because right now it's touching the homes of every citizen and every community. So there's a greater emphasis on what can we do to alleviate some of the problems of gun violence within our communities or gun violence within our communities, particularly gang violence as well. Ms. Brown, um, finally on this, I want you to speak to the victim for me, please. Um, what do you say to a young woman who has been violated like this? Um, I, I, sorry, I couldn't hear that question. Can I, you I, want, I want you finally to speak on this part of the interview, to speak to the victim for me, please. What do you say to a young lady, a young man who has been violated like this? Um, how, do you, how do you begin to comfort, comfort him or her? I'm sorry, I still... Uh, you blurring a bit so i heard family and victim yeah um is, is can you hear me better now this is better correct excellent i was asking you finally on this part of the interview for you to speak to the victim for me please um what do you say to a young lady who has been violated like this how do you begin to comfort him or her you were talking about comforting the victim and the family yeah what do you, i wanted to, what's your message to the victim right a victim like this well, first of all, let's um, be very clear. There are two things that we need to be concerned about. When children alert us, when young persons and minors alert us as to somebody creating some kind of harm or inflicting some kind of harm on them, it is always the best thing to give that child that listening ear. We want to ensure that we do that. We do not what we call the claim victim blaming. We do not want to do that because the majority of times when children come to us and say somebody have to harm them we were like oh well you know we try to dismiss it as if the child may not understand what is happening so it's very important that when we get those situations that we give the child a listening air we comfort the child and also to re-ensure the child that you did not do do anything wrong you did not place yourself in any situation to do it wrong because we've had a society that has victim blamed us for many generations mm -hmm. where perhaps it was the way the child speak the way the child walk the child shouldn't have been home at loan or dress. perhaps the child was shouldn't be in certain locations so we place the emphasis on the victim and not the perpetrator so what is also important in terms of I would say counseling is very important for counseling for that child or for the victim it's very important but also the legality which is very important as well. We have a problem in not only St. Lucia, but most of the Caribbean islands, where we have people on remand for over 10 years. Justice delayed is justice, justice denied. denied. And we cannot overemphasize this. Yeah. So the reality is that even if you charge someone and the person has been granted bail, the person has not been convicted. That person is still within the society. My and we're not saying that once the person, the person is charged and they've not convicted. Can I speak to you on WhatsApp? That, 
someone is innocent and speak to you on WhatsApp. guilty. Yeah. So it's very important that we understand that as well. Yeah, absolutely. I like how you 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 um you ended there. Justice delayed is justice denied. So have we lost Miss Brown? Miss Brown, you still with us? Correct? Yeah, she still. I'm still her. here. Yes, I'm yeah. still so, here. So on this particular case with the 11 year old, we don't want the case to go on for a year, two years, um, three years, as has happened in the in in the past. It has to be fast track. It has to be swift um and it has to be honest uh pursuit of justice as well because justice delayed is justice denied last friday uh miss brown was it thursday i had a, i had a gentleman on the show who i know piqued your interest on a, a legal proposal um yeah. he, he worked across the region as well i know you're familiar with him uh he's proposing that Sinisha takes careful and and close look at um, the issue of bench trials, which in his mind simplifies the legal process and, and speeds up our quest for justice. First, what, what say you? I, and I think it's uh, in, in hindsight, you're saying that it is, it, it is a plausible solution. However, I believe that persons involved should have adequate um, choices in, in that matter. Because the reason when we have bench trials, that means the judge becomes the judge, the jury, and the executioner, if you want to put it that way. Mm. And so it's very important by eliminating the jury trial, you eliminating the public, meaning that the public has its role to play. Because one of the, I would say, one of the philosophical questions about justice and meting out justice is that the public has a role. The public brings in what we'd say in terms of that impartiality. Mm. So when you have in cases of the judge being the one not only to hear the trials, and we see that all the time in, in civil matters, which is which is fair, and we've, we've seen how it works. It's very swift, and of course, it saves us on tax appears, and of course, and that is something that we should be thinking about, considering the number of persons that we have in remand. However, when we have cases criminal cases, mm. cases that brings about and questions our morality within our societies, those kinds of cases where we call these um, malapro, uh, malassance crimes, those heinous crimes. What do we want to do at those stage? Um, do, we, we, do we only want in, um, persons or um, defendants to be in a position where it's the judge that will also not only sentence um, the, the, the the, it's not the judge only that's going to tell you whether you're guilty or not, mm -hmm. but also whether you're guilty or innocent, but also the person that's going to met your sentence. So in such cases, yes, the swiftness is there, and this is what we'd like to do, and I do applaud the gentleman for coming in and sharing that proposal, but we have to take in consideration all the dynamics involved. Mm -hmm. Because when you have, in such cases, you may have two judges, you may have three judges. What I'm saying also is that if you have a jury of 12 persons, there's the opinion of 12 persons as opposed to three. Oh, as opposed to so one. the element of objectivity mm -hmm is very important. The element of integrity is very important. And let's, let's be real. Let's talk about legal realism. Um, we've spoken about integrity in law. We have had judges that have been too lenient in terms of sentencing, particularly in cases where it comes to gender violence. In the region, in the world, we've had cases where the judge has been too harsh on certain matters. Very recently, I don't know if you look at the, the case in Ottawa with the young woman who was charged for killing her sex trafficker. I'm no, not familiar. In the US. Now that is a very peculiar case where the person, not only that was she charged and convicted, but again, the sentencing and the judge actually made her pay compensation to the family members of the person that raped and, and sorted her, her and trafficked her. Mm. So these are the kinds of concerns I think we should have. And yes, I do understand that it has worked in other Caribbean islands, but we need to do the research and to see what has been the impact of bench bench trials within yeah. the Caribbean. Yeah. And how has it worked? Has it worked to the benefit of the state? Because of the course, the judge works for the state. Or has it worked for the defendants? So we would like to see what the research shows. And of course, I'm quite sure the defendants, the attorneys, they would at least 
inform the inmates, inform, I try not to call them inmates, but the defendants, and uh, to tell them at least what would be the possible outcome. Because remember, there's something in law that also, in uh, philosophy of law, it would, would claim it as what the judge what would perceive the outcome would be. Of course, sometimes judges would think about the social infrastructure. If a judge decides they've been a heinous crime and decide to, okay, well, based on the evidence, I believe I should give the person two months in jail. How do you think the public is going to respond to it? So it's very important when we think about bench judges, the reason, as I said before, you we do not want to elimin eliminate the public because the public has a role to play. And yes, the public may not have the legal um, background and they may not know how the law works, but it's important that they participate in the judicial system. There's a reason why it's done that way. And for generations, for centuries, it has worked that way. And of course, particularly when we say the public, when the public feels that they're part of it, and the public, what we mean is the jury, the jury is, is anybody. It's the ordinary person in the bus, the, your neighbor. Those persons have to see that they are part of the justice system. So yes, in one way, it can work, and it may work very speedily, but at the same time, we're saying we need to show how has justice been done in those cases. And let's take some time and look at in terms of how many years have they actually mm. had bench trials yeah, yeah. and see the outcomes and the consequences of those trials. Has it been fair? Has it been just? Have we had any questionable sentences that we had to go back and how? And one of the questions I also wanted to ask, out of those sentences and when the sentences have been met, how many persons have appealed the sentences after those trials mm, mm -hmm. and that is the question because the majority of times persons may not be able to afford to have their cases um, um, appealed so in all of those cases we want to look at in terms of what is the research and yes when we understand um, no kind of i would say in any kind of um, processes or proposal nothing in, in itself in and of itself is flawless so we will get in some cases where we have some challenges and difficulties. And if it's the process where it can be worked in a way that cases can be done very swiftly and justice can be done very swiftly, we do not want to at the same time violate the fundamental rights of any individual, not the perpetrators and not the victims. Yeah, it's a very healthy discussion and um, I say very thank you for yes, coming in. We want to keep you close, Ms. Brown. So, so expect continued emails from us and expect continued communication from us you bring a very special perspective to any discussion on on matters like these so we'll keep you close in the coming weeks and months i'm um, here on this platform i want to thank you for coming in and sharing thank your you perspective with us this morning thank you and good morning St. Lucia, and i hope everyone is well considering the flood that they experienced last yesterday thank you for your blessings and you stay thank safe you. over there in bridgetown barbados felicia brown I'm joining Thank me you. to okay. end um, this morning's uh, program. Our time just about two minutes already after nine o'clock. Quickly before we go, some very important updates that we must share. I know um, our CEO wouldn't mind as well. The island's prime minister, Honorable Philip Pierre, um, he is scheduled to update the nation. The prime minister will address the media um, on the government's response to the damaging flash flooding events that occurred yesterday. Once again, Prime Minister Pierre will address the media this morning to update on the government's response to the damaging flood flooding events yesterday. Um, that uh, address to the media will happen at about 10.30 this morning at the Prime Minister's offices in downtown Cashews. Tune in from 6.45, your first news of the evening with Daniela and the entire news team, Daniela Edwin and the news team, uh, for the first insight into what the Prime Minister plans to do in response to yesterday's uh, flash flooding. Many, many people now um, looking for some sort of help. So that happens this morning. We'll have the updates right here on Hot 7 TV. Continue to follow this platform. This is uh, where you want to be. We'll be back, God willing, from 6 a.m. tomorrow with another informative show. Hopefully, we'll be off to a smooth, smooth start tomorrow. On behalf of my entire team, thank you so much for joining us. If you fuel in up this morning and for the remainder of today, be sure to fuel up with Sol uh, Petroleum. Sol gas takes you further 
Um, so fewer love for us all today. I'll be back tomorrow, God willing. Take good care of yourselves and each other. Thank you.